Hello and welcome to our April 1st uh, live stream for Phys 151, General Physics Mechanics, Spring 2020 at Jacksonville University. Um, we are nearing our last couple weeks of the semester. Uh, we have formally talked about and discussed everything that uh, we needed to talk about um, for, uh, for content-wise for the class. And our last couple weeks will just be spent uh, getting your last letters home finished and getting the, uh, getting the final presentations in. Um, I've already been contacted by some folks who will need an alternative to the final presentation or who will need an extension on it. So again, if there are issues you're encountering, um, if, you're, if, if you're without the technology that you need, or if you're feeling ill, or if you're being affected by the stay-at-home order just released by the governor of Florida, um, then, uh, yeah, please let me know. Please let me know what I can do to help you. Let me know over email so that I've got that documented and so I can follow up on that later. Uh, and we will take uh, we, we will we will take it one step at a time. Like I said a couple weeks ago, my goal these last this last month of the semester is just to make sure that you feel like you got your tuition's worth, and to make sure that. You know, you are prepared for moving on to what you need to do next. And I feel confident that most of you were pretty well prepared before uh, before we went on spring break. And uh, there's a couple of folks that I do need to hear from. If you are somebody who has not really turned in any letters home, I need to be hearing from you. So anyway, let's take a look today at a little bit more detail of the final project um, the final project is pretty straightforward. It's the same type of activity that you've done every week. You're just picking one and kind of finding your own way through it. So in the final project topics document, which I'll, uh, which is in our class folder, which I'll resend to you in an email this afternoon when we finish up, uh, you select a topic. Um, some of them involve uh, the capture code compare process. Some of them just involve capturing. Some of them just involve coding. Some of them are completely different. I've already got one student who has expressed an interest in developing a creature for Adventures in Notharia. Uh, that is an option you can take. Um, you can make a video tutorial for future students about something you learned in this class. Um, it, the, the field is, is pretty wide open. Um, also, if you're interested in a group, uh, take a look at the final project group sign up as well. We've had a couple of folks express interest in uh, problem in in, uh, in in working on those groups and projects. And uh, ah, yes, Courtney's asked about the uh, issue with uh, Phys One Five Two. Courtney, everybody is experiencing that issue. I've emailed the registrar and uh, will let you know when that is taken care of. Um, okay, so let's see. So what I wanted to look at today was I've placed in this folder a sample presentation, which I will send you the link to here in the chat. Sample presentation. This is an actual presentation given by a uh, group of students last spring. Um, I removed their names to protect the innocent, uh, but Basically, it's 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 pretty straightforward to, to, to read through. Um, you notice that they've given it a title slide with a pretty specific title, right? So they didn't call it final project. They didn't call it Phys one five two or Phys one five one project. Uh, they didn't call it forces. They called it Pascar motion forces in action. So I know we're going to be working with Pascars, which obviously none of y'all are going to be doing unless you have a Pascar at home, and we're going to be dealing with forces. Uh, then they show us an outline slide, and basically the outline slide, you take uh, all of your uh, content, make about one bullet for each slide that you've got in the presentation, and you just spend, you know, 30 seconds walking us through what you are going to be talking about. Outline slides are important because psychologically, humans need to know where the discussion is going so that they can kind of mentally prepare themselves. So what you're doing when you give an outline slide is to help your listeners follow along and following listeners are happy listeners and happy listeners ask you good questions instead of bad questions at the end. Uh, then they move into the setup. So everybody's going to have some sort of, 
you know, background or setup or methods or something. So if you're kind of doing the traditional, you know, uh, uh, scientific project presentation, you know, this is uh, this is sort of the the beginning of your of your problem, right? You're you're kind of stating what your your physical setup was. If you're doing something a little more afield, so uh, if you're doing uh, a, a, an adventure is an authoria creature. This is more what your motivation is. This is why you're interested in doing this thing. Why you're interested in making this creature. If you're doing uh, a presentation on a video, this is about why you chose to make the video that you chose. This is basically something to ease us into your project as kind of a first stepping stone. Um, you notice that they've got visuals here. They've got visuals on most of their slides. Ideally, every slide would have a visual. That's not always possible, but basically, if you can put a relevant visual into a slide, it helps your audience follow along. Now, don't just put an image in for the sake of putting an image in. You know, don't just put a smiley face to try to keep people happy. But, you know, something relevant is always helpful. You notice that they've also got a citation here. Uh, if you have a citation that's relevant, go ahead and include it on the slide. You don't need a reference slide at the end. You want to have your um, you want to have your citations throughout. Um, you come over here. Uh, they've got their setup continued. They have included a video of of or excuse me, a recording of the video that they analyze. This is really easy to do in Google Slides. If you upload your video to YouTube, you can just go to Insert Video. And then just put in the YouTube the YouTube URL, just copy and paste the URL from YouTube. Uh, if you are demonstrating for us a video that you developed, a tutorial that you developed, this is a great way to share that. It's just embed it in the presentation. Um, and then here they've got uh, uh, a little bit of information about what they did. They've got the tracker step. And then they've started to show their results, right? So if you're doing the kind of traditional um, setup, you've got... Uh, you know, you, you've got some graphs to show. Graphs are what really tell the story in a, in a science presentation. And so really in a science presentation, you want to get to the graphs and kind of spend as much time on the graphs as you can to kind of walk people through what the story is. You notice you don't need a whole lot of text on the screen when you've got the graphs because the graph is there to tell the story and you want to kind of interpret the graph for them. So you want to talk about what are the interesting features? Look at these cusps here. Why are we interested in those cusps? Look at the concavity change. Why are we interested in the concavity there? Etc. You know, things like that. Just, you know, it's kind of like what you do in a letter home, but you're doing it uh, in, you're doing it verbally with us. Uh, let's see. Then they've got uh, kind of their, uh, then they've got their coding section here. Uh, Okay, got a question for doing the video of us, uh, for doing a tutorial video, do we need to do a presentation? Um, yes, your presentation is mostly describing the setup and kind of outline for a video. The bulk of your presentation could be you showing us clips from your video, if that makes sense. Um, so like you might have a slide where, you might have a couple slides where you say, here's why we made this video, here is uh, um, what we made sure to include. And now, oh, here's a slide with the video. Let's watch it for a couple minutes, you know. So, yes, most of it can be a sample of your video. You don't have to show us the entire video. Like, if your video is 15 minutes long, we don't want to see it in the presentation. But maybe show us, you know, the, the high point, you know, the, the best minute or something like that. And then here they've got their comparison. Uh, or, excuse me, they don't have their comparison yet. But here they got the result of their code. Again, they're just grabbing a screenshot. Uh, they did include a link to their code. That is very helpful to do for people who want to follow along with it afterwards. Because that means somebody can come in and, you know, uh, and make their own copy of it. This is a lot better to do than pasting in a screenshot of the entire code. I've seen some presentations where somebody grabs a screenshot of this 30 lines of code, they paste it into here and they expect us to read it. Nobody's going to read that. Just include a link to the code. That's that's sufficient. Here they've got their comparison, right? Uh, you know, you got a set of cusps here, set of cusps here. Hooray, the video matched up with the code. Uh, you know how to make the comparison by now. So for a presentation like this, it's pretty much like a letter home in verbal format. Whereas for some of the other presentation, you know, it's just it's just kind of a, a history of, of what you did in the development of your project. And basically, as long as you've got a complete coherent story, uh, you can expect to receive a, a good high score on this, right? So I'm not going to put together, you know, a line by line rubric where I'm ticking things off because it's, uh, you know, that's just you know, I, I don't feel like that's going to be entirely helpful. I would rather, 
you know, see a, a, see you deliver a presentation and then celebrate that with you and have that celebration be reflected in the score at the end. So as long as you are delivering a presentation that tells a complete story, you should expect to get a, a good final score on this thing. Um, let's see. I'm going to peek at my notes here to see what else I wanted to make sure we talked about. Um, yeah, I think that's about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing I want to show you, I did include in the same folder a template for a presentation. Copy... Uh, presentation template. There we go. Uh, if you want to, um, if you want to have something to go off of, here it is. Uh, you could literally use all the slides in here and just have like six slides here. Um, you know, you, you really don't need that 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 much to go on. Um, here you're going to add a specific title. Here you're going to add your names, and you are replacing this text. Don't leave this text here, and don't please don't leave it in all caps. The, the capitalized stuff means you you replace it. Don't don't replace it in all caps. Here's your outline slide. A little bit of information about that. Here's a background. A background slide just answers what is your project about. Remember, we haven't been working with the same project for the last two weeks. You've all got different projects, and so uh, you know people need to be eased into that. Why is it important? What does humankind already know about it in you know one or two sentences? Um, and what physics principles are involved? Right. Um, your methods section. Again, you want to make this title specific. Don't call it methods. Call it, you know, uh, you know, call it uh, tracker analysis of the golf ball or something like that. Uh, let's see. Then we've got uh, uh, your results. You know, make sure you show us. You know, showing is better than writing in that case. And then here you have your conclusions. For your conclusion, you literally just repeat your outline slide and then uh, and then add some information to it. All right. I see we've got a couple of. Uh, I see we got a couple of questions here uh, for Joel. Or so we got a question here for the how do minecarts work in minecarts? Can I simply talk about how they work on ice? Sure. I didn't know that was a thing. I was mostly looking for an answer to my to the question I posed in my video, but I'm happy to learn more. Uh, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 the template. Here we go. Okay, so with that, that's all I could think of as far as uh, you know, giving you from uh, giving you some some info about the. Uh, actually, let me share this. Uh, the link can. Uh, yeah, there we go. We'll just copy that. There we go. Um, I'm happy to take other questions about the final project. Otherwise, um, I've got a couple of questions um, about other stuff in the class that folks wanted to go over. But other than that, um, yeah, I'm happy to take questions over chat. Um, I do. I, I did get a question about uh, you know structuring the final project or about the final presentation. If you're doing a sort of non-traditional. Uh, topic like like say you're doing uh, say you're creating a creature for adventures in Natharia. Um you follow the same general idea you know everybody has a background you know everybody's discussing some kind of concept you know you're just you're discussing the background of the concept everybody has done some kind of procedure or process that's to describe in the methods and the results is the final thing that you end up with and if the final thing is a graph then great show us the graphs if the final thing is a creature for adventures in Natharia, great show us the stat block you know, show us the, the special abilities, show us what you think it would look like in, a, in an encounter, something like that. You know, uh, you know, it's it's you're basically telling the story of, of what came before your work. What did you do in your work? And then uh, what have you ended up? What have you ended up with at the end? You know, so it's kind of beginning, middle and end kind of story kind of thing. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Haven't seen any other questions come in yet on chat. Um, uh, so, uh, we had another student, I, I suppose we should address this since it does apply to everybody in this class, ask about, uh, there's some issues with registering for Fizz 15. Currently it is only accepting prereqs for some reason. It is not accepting corecs. So I have emailed registrar. Um, I will let you know when I hear back about, uh, how that's being fixed. Um, cause I believe it's, it, I believe it's in place for 151. I know we did it before, so we should be able to do it again. Um. I'll let you know when I get that addressed. 
I wouldn't worry too much about losing a seat in that class because the folks who will be taking Phys 152 are in Phys 151 right now. So that's all of you kind of in the same boat. Uh, speaking of boats from Minecraft. Um, so I, I will let you know. I sh I'm hoping to hear back from them in the next, uh, you know, day or two. Um, if it goes longer than that, I will. I, if it goes longer than that, I can, I believe I can override people. But uh, don't, don't, send those, don't send in those requests just yet. I'm going to see if we can get it smoothed out for everybody. Um, let's see. Another question I got from a student was um, on the tracker project for rolling objects. So for week, what was that? Week 10 we were on rolling stuff. Yeah, week 10 rolling. Um, I asked you to get a video of, of something rolling, right? And some of you have had some luck with that. Some of you have not. Depending on the thing that you are tracking, it might be easier or harder to track a point on the end. You can try, you know, grabbing a, a, a highlighter or a permanent marker or something just putting a dot there. Like if you've got a quarter, you can put a little red dot on one point on the edge of the quarter and maybe try to track that. If that's still a bit too much, um, you can always find a video online like even this GIF and just uh, do a screen capture of it. So if you've got something like OBS, which is free, or even Windows Movie Maker, which is free, or whatever Apple products have that's free, um, you can just grab a screen capture, something like this, and then upload that into Tracker. That will work just as well. Um, if that simply doesn't work, you can also take this one as a as as a dropped grade. You know, you do you do get a free drop on that one. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, that was the only, I think that's the only follow-up question I've gotten since our last stream. So like I said, I'm happy to take any other uh, questions in chat. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, Joel's pistol question will still be uh, office hours on Friday and Monday. So um, I, I've had a, a, a personal thing come up with a, with a friend's wedding on that may be taking place on Friday. Everything is kind of in flux in Jacksonville right now. Um, if I end up not being able to do uh, office hours Friday, I will let you know when it's rescheduled for. Um, I mean, you know, office hours is basically, you know, come on and ask questions. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't take place on Monday. Um, I'm sure you're all just mesmerized by the cycloid motion on the screen here right now. 
Um, let's see, what else might we take a look at? So, uh, yeah, I'll wait for a few other questions to come in on chat. Um, let's see, what, uh, what else can we take a look at for this thing? Um, and I, I think I specified this in writing, but um, the, the projects list here, feel free to to double up on, on topics. So if somebody's already taken the topic that you're interested in, feel free to do that anyway. If we were in class, I would make you all do different topics, but since we are scattered to the four winds, I don't, I don't think that's a reasonable expectation. So if somebody's already claimed the topic you want, feel free to, you know, feel free to claim that one as well. Um, See what else we got. So yeah, that's all I uh, had on my list for today. I'm happy to hang around for another few minutes, see if we get other questions in. Um, otherwise, I do thank you all for your time. Hope you're all safe and healthy and isolated. And uh, I will see you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, one other. Oh yeah, forgot, forgot to mention. I did have this in my notes, and I skipped past it. Um, I have to also sent out an, an email. I'll, I'll include this as well in my summary email at the end of our time today. Um, I've created a doodle poll for, uh, for uh, scheduling times for the final presentation. I don't really expect us to all end up in the same place at the same time, right? We've got, uh, according to my numbers, we've got 11 out of 23 of you uh, watching right now. Um, and so I, you know, I, I, I do not expect that all 20 of us will end up in the same place at the same time. Um, but it would be nice to get, you know, a little bit of an audience. So I've sent out a link to a doodle poll where you can select times that you are available for the final presentation. And basically what I'll do is I'll pick a few times that work for, you know, clusters of people and we'll present to you know a subset of the class and whoever can make it each time makes each time that's wonderful what you need to do in that poll is you put in your name so that i know you know who's getting scheduled then uh if you're working with somebody else just put in you know put in both your names you know separated by a comma or something and then select as many times as you are possibly available um if you only select one time i've only had one or two people do this so far if you only select one time, then basically you're saying all or nothing, it's got to be that time. And I may or may not have other people, you know, at that time. So the, the, the more times you can tell me you're available, the better. But basically we're looking at the last week of classes, uh, classes, quote unquote, the last week of the semester, uh, going from April 13th to April, uh, whatever the last day is there, April 17th. Um, and I'll pick, you know, three or four chunks of time that people are available. Um, if you are in this class, Phys 151, and in technical communication, you can give your presentation for both those classes back to back um, if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can give those on different days. Uh, if it's easier for you to, to just get them all over with in one chat session, then you can do that. If you would rather have the time to cool down in between them, then that's fine as well. I, I, I'm I'm going to be as accommodating as possible with these. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think there was anything else on my list to go over. So uh, what I'll do is I'll hang out in the chat for another maybe seven minutes till the bottom of the hour. Uh, see what questions come in. Otherwise, thank you all for your time. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Let me know if you need anything. And I will talk to you later. Have a great afternoon. Oh, quick update. Uh, the, uh, the, the wedding I was trying to play around is happening tonight. And so I will be available for office hours Friday.